We're now joined by a special guest who's been part of the Corrie cast for over 15 years. In her role as Viz Stape, she's married a murderer, given birth on live TV, and even carried out a topless protest on the garage roof. It's Jenny McAlpine. Jenny, thanks so much for joining us today. Hello! Yeah, I've done all of those things. I've forgotten I've done all of those things. I've been quite a busy um, busy 16 years, if you put it like that, I suppose. Yeah. So uh, you joined the cast of Coronation Street in early 2001 while you were still a teenager. What can you tell us about how you got involved in the show? Well, I haven't kept this a secret. I was working um, at Boots on the checkout and um, I was going to my local drama workshop and there was an audition and I had auditioned for all sorts of things and I had an agent and sent me along to the audition for Corrie, which was for four episodes. And I just got a few days off working at Boots in between doing my levels as well. I was doing A levels at the same time too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. um, and then, uh, I got, yeah, so I gave me time off, you know, for the audition. And then to, I said, oh, I've got the part. They said, oh, I've got to give you more time off. So then I got the part. Then I did the four episodes. Then I just went back to Boots and went back to college. <laughs> um, and then about, I don't know how long, you probably know, three months later, I think, <laughs> something like that, in the June, I think, they said, would I come back full-time to work in Mike Baldwin's knicker factory? <laughs> um, and uh, I thought, right. So I had to, um, so I had to, well, I haven't officially, technically, had him a notice in a boot, so it's still <laughs> very much up in the air. Oh, right, I yeah. I hope you still get your 10% discount, then. Uh, we didn't get any discount, you know. We should have done. We didn't get any staff discount. No? <laughs> no, they might be kinder now, but we didn't then. Oh, gosh. So, uh, what, what are some of your early memories working with the likes of, I don't know, David Nielsen and Julie hasman Yeah, so obviously lovely David and Julie were just incredible for a young girl who'd never... Well, I'd done, I'd done little bits and, um, and I had filmed other things. I've been filming Emmerdale not long before. But, you know, Coronation Street is like a different a different thing. So, um so so to have those two around me from the start, kind of just just watching them and those them guiding me, they were they were they were brilliant. And even, you know, and today it's just I've just done a scene today with David in Roy's roles and um there's just that, that affection there that's, um, and me and Julie still text each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just dead proud whenever I see her, you know, on the telly being fabulous. Yeah. Um, so I was hoping she was going to be the new Doctor Who when it was room oh, for yeah. the female. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with Jodie. <laughs> but, but yeah, so um, just having, you know, having those two in my life from early on um, w- was incredible. And then also Johnny Briggs. Uh, and then I worked early on, you know, because I know I've flitted about and I'm with Tyrone now, but originally, even though I filmed him off Maria, I was with Tyrone. And so, um, when we were both a lot younger and after, uh, and so we, uh, with him came Liz Dawn, Bill Tarmy. Uh, so d- d- yeah. d- within yeah. about a year or two, I'd done scenes with kind of <laughs> these pretty, pretty big icons of the street. Yeah. It must have been incredible working with those with those actors. It was just um, it, you can't really. It's just kind of you don't know what to do, and you don't. You're kind of taking it all in. You don't know. You, you don't know what to think, <laughs> really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the truth of it. You're just looking at me, you know. Oh, wow. <laughs> and um, yeah, and then and then quite early. I can't remember when, but it was quite early on when I did the rooftop protest. And I was still mm-hmm. young. <laughs> a young kid. The point of that was that Mike Baldwin had stolen my ideas. Um, Terrible. That we, yeah, which was dreadful. <laughs> and so, but we had a bit of a set to in the pub, and I had to pour pour a drink in his face, in Johnny Briggs' oh, face, to pour Mike Baldwin's whiskey, which was not whiskey; it was apple juice <laughs> in his face. We had to do a few takes. Oh god. Um, yeah, but I suppose Johnny had had a few drinks thrown over him over the years, so kind of used to it but I was scared yeah that, that must be quite intimidating actually to have to actually throw the drink on, on really intimidating I kind of had to well I don't know it, was, it wasn't a pint but it wasn't one of those kind of slow pours where you where you where you tip it right at the top of the head right. it was a whiskey so it was kind of a shove in the face <laughs> I had to make sure I didn't let go of the glass so it's quite kind of violent really like, yeah just kind of shove it right in the face <laughs> oh, that, that's not the only drink I think I've poured a drink 
Yeah. I don't know if I poured a drink over. <laughs> I think I might have poured a drink over Tracy at the time when she was did the horrible thing with Roy and oh, when you yeah. know Roy and Haley had their baby patients is now Amy and all that business when she was dreadful to Roy. I definitely punched Tracy. I was going to say that. I remember pub. you punching her. Mm, but I don't know if I might have thrown a drink or maybe I'm. Maybe I didn't. I think I drew a, threw a drink over Kirk at one point <laughs> when we were going out. It must be hard to keep track. It's, t- it's so hard to keep track of who you've, who you've been violent towards <laughs> um, in, in, in all these years. But yeah, um, oh, I think it might have been Sally. Was it Sally Webster? I know she's Sally, Sally Metcalf okay. now, but she was Sally Webster when we were feuding. Um, I certainly slapped her in Underworld when I thought she was having it away with my John Skate. <laughs> I think maybe I threw a drink on it anyway. I've, I've you know, I've been, says, you know, she acts like Bossy wouldn't know, but actually she slapped quite, quite a few of them, but on the cast. <laughs> Is there, um, there must be a real camaraderie in the, amongst the cast that work in the machines underworld as well. We are, we're like a proper maker factory. Um, I mean, obviously, well, well, we're not. If you ask anyone who works in a maker factory, we are most certainly not like a proper maker <laughs> factory because we, we don't look, we obviously don't sew any knickers. No. <laughs> we just stand, sit around and talk all day. Um, not many knickers get found. Last time you saw you stop us. sewing knickers, didn't Kirsty um, rig the machine and sew your fingers? Well, this, <laughs> yeah, she sewed my finger. Yes, she did. Well remembered. <laughs> but, you know, that was a special day that whenever they... It's a ve- it was a very big deal to have a needle in the mm. machine. They don't let us, the directors and the producers, they don't trust us because <laughs> we talk so much. So they, we don't have needles in those machines as a rule. So when, when it's called for and when it's needed, there's a special man who comes, who, who puts the needle in the machines and, and there's a, we have a health and safety briefing. <laughs> it's quite right, though, because honestly, we, we'd be a nightmare if we had a needle in there all the time. Can you imagine all that gossiping? And then we went down to do that. We'd be sewing our fingers together all the time. Yeah, <laughs> there'd be blood everywhere. <laughs> there would, there'd be blood everywhere. But yeah, we, we, we are really like a proper... And, and the director and the first assistant director whose job it is to kind of get everyone in line. I think the factory might be their worst, worst set for getting everyone in line because we do chat quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Kind of like school. You know, it feels like school as well when you sat behind the desk. Yeah. There's something about it. Yeah. Then we are kind of chatting. And then we whisper. And then it's you know we try and keep it whisper. Then it gets louder. It gets louder. And the first thing he says, right, everybody, be quiet, silence. <laughs> Speaking of people in the factory, you wasn't it Fizz who was the first person to name Dirk earlier this year as well? Yes, yes, that was um, yeah, I thought. Blew up into something big, didn't it? <laughs> um, what if we should? What if we? What if we'd gone with um? With Paul, like we originally, no, we didn't. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, we, we did not expect um, him to, uh, well, we're quite, we're quite right. He's become such an iconic character so soon <laughs> after his debut. But obviously, Dick's been around for a long time. It's just that that was the first time he, his, his official name check. <laughs> yeah. but our, our lovely Adam. Yeah, uh, who he's been he's been around for for years. Yeah, yeah carrying yeah. those carrying those knickers and throwing the um, throwing the material over his shoulder. Yeah, clipboard as well. Seen him with a clipboard, mm. taking <laughs> notes. Clipboard, yeah, make, yeah, ticking off. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what he does. He's a bit of a he's a bit of an enigma, really. <laughs> um, he's got a few roles. He's probably not really employed by anyone. He just turns up there every day. <laughs> he might be. Oh, he might. He might just love. He might just love. Um, knickers. Um, knickers. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Maybe he does. Um, yeah. No, I think he's a filler. Filler in there. Mm. Yeah, he does. He does all the work that nobody else wants to do. <laughs> <laughs> Makes the tea. Yeah. He's never made me a cup of tea. I shall. I shall make him like that. Uh, get on that, Adam. Come on. <laughs> yeah. So, what what do you imagine the situation is with Scylla at the moment? Because the last time we heard from her, she was suffering quite badly from osteoporosis. She, mm, do you think she's better yeah. now? I mean, she clearly didn't bother to visit Chesney when he was at death's door a few weeks ago. She did not bother. This is the 
trouble with families in the street when mm. they leave the street. They, you know, some dreadful, dreadful things can happen to their family members, <laughs> and, and and they don't. Oh, lovely, joyous things like births of babies and, and marriages and things, and nobody ever seems to come back. Um, <laughs> I understand that because it's not a very nice place to come back to, Weatherfield, is it? And most of them have left with, you know, quite quite a lot of baggage. So, yeah. Scylla, I think she will turn up when she needs something. And the mm. sad truth is she hasn't needed anything enough yet. Um, I don't, we didn't even, I'm sure, I hope she texted Chesney. We didn't discuss it, but I'm hoping that she at least texted Aww. him to ask if he's all right. Wendy, on the other hand, who plays Scylla, always gets in touch with you see, and she always messages us and sends us a Twitter if something's happened. She says, oh gosh, Chesney, Aww. are you okay? <laughs> now, Wendy does, she keeps up with it and, and checks that we're okay. She's a lot more caring than, um, than Scylla. It's a bit like Tyrone's mum as well, isn't it? Um, Jackie, she's not been on it for ages. And maybe her... She's not, yeah. Well, exactly. And, well, that's it. And, you know, me and Alan laugh about that. That are, you know, we've both... Well, two things. We've both got parents who are kind of similar, you know. Mm. Um, um, that, you know, they're similar to each other. They haven't really brought us up very well. We've done, we've done not bad, me and Tyrone, <laughs> considering how badly we were brought up. That's what I like to think. Yes, I agree. Um, <laughs> and then we've also got children. Both of our children mm. are the offspring of psychopaths. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, uh, <laughs> so, yeah. We've got dread that we've got in common. Dreadful mothers and, um, Part yeah. Scary partners. <laughs> scary, scary partners, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And one of our favourite stories was actually the the John Stape saga, which is completely bonkers, um, and it did it did stretch the limits of credibility at times. But we did we really enjoyed that one a Love lot. It. <laughs> what was your what are some of your favourite memories from that time in the show? Oh, oh, I loved it, and it did, and it, I mean, you say it did. I mean, it, it went crazy, and I think that's what from the greatest characters though and especially when they are a baddie oh yeah um, they've the, got the greatest, a bit crazy they are absolutely bit crazy and they always because obviously the writers are sitting around those conferences and when they plan the stories they're thinking mm. oh this has got to come to an end soon <laughs> but we don't want it to not yet we can't we can't let it end because we love it so much so let's just stretch it a little bit <laughs> and just make him a little bit you know more crazy and do something else um you can see, and you know, with Bad Bad, you can see now on screen, Pat Phelan is, oh, is, yeah. is, you know, every time you say, like, oh, I can see the, you know, oh, they should have got rid of him loads of times. Uh, not lovely Connor, but, you know, the character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's so fabulous that they have to keep searching it out. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, yeah, so, and Graham was just, um, <laughs> I mean, he was a joy. The moment I, I met him, I, I just you know got, I just knew that we got on um, I hope Alan who plays Tyrone's not listening to this you know because mm. we don't like we don't, I don't like him mentioned really <laughs> <laughs> so you know I'm very lucky in that I mean um, I sound like a flea you want to put it like this <laughs> but the um, the three well I'm going to say four actually but the, the three significant men in my Coronary Street life in terms of romantically, which was Kirky mm -hmm. and John State and Tyrone, um, all three of those men and the actors are just beautiful and I love them to bits. And then I'll also add my little Chesney in that too. Oh yeah. Um, so, um, you know, so I'm dead lucky, you know, that um, that we've just, not just at the night, but we've got on, and so me and Graham just got on from the minute, the minute we met. and. And then I knew really quickly what he was going to do, even though it was crazy. Um, and it, it was just, it was just fabulous. My, my favourite bit of it, I can't even, because obviously some of it was, you know, ridiculous. <laughs> and obviously it's still very much there. When Brian came into into the show through that storyline, he came because he was the head teacher at the school that John was teaching at. Those scenes were some of my funniest with him coming because he thought he was called Colin. Yeah. And, uh, Colin Fisher. And then I'd say, 
Do you want some do you want brew jam? Me too, so I'm there. So, <laughs> and they call it. It's got, it was just, I mean, they were brilliant scenes. They really um, were. I always remember the Christmas <laughs> scene where he, you and uh, Rosie got your... Uh, Christmas presents mixed up. Oh, the, 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 the underwear that John had bought you both. Loved, loved, loved that, that, that scene. And then it ended up, and it, yeah, Christmas Day, and ended up spilling Sydney straight away mm. at the sexy lingerie that she'd just opened. <laughs> were not Was not meant for her. I don't know if she knew straight away, but she did. <laughs> um, and Rosie knew straight away that the flannel <laughs> that she'd just opened weren't for her. And then, yeah, ended with typical fabulous Coronation Street style the whole Christmas ending on the street with a big brawl between John and um, Kevin brilliant Kevin showing his uh, craziness and me stood there with me with my best Christmas album <laughs> um, I'd sort of loosely based on a Christmas tree cause it was a green dress and then I'd sort of I'd sort of decorated around it and it all went wrong it all went horrible it has to at Christmas yeah, it has to. Of course it does. Of course it does. It's, it's got to. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know if I've had that. I don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Did have a good Christmas actually? A couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, but in oh, yeah, 16 years, I think that might be the only one. When's this wedding happening between the uh, and hey, we got, Well, it's a blowing good question. That. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, I don't want it to happen. Um, I think. But I think you know we're kind of forever skint this is the thing and um let me just tell you we're about to get skinter i can tell you that oh dear so yeah exactly oh dear so you know the last last thing that happened with the with in terms of the wedding was fizz went off and pawned her engagement ring which we never got back and i keep Mm. saying as in Jenny keeps saying mm. uh, to Alan when we're on set, he says, you do know I'm not actually Tyrone and you're not, this isn't actually. I say, where, what, why couldn't have we have gotten the engagement ring back while we were flush? And he said, you know, you, know, you don't speak to me about it. He speaks to Frank about it. <laughs> 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 but, so, we've missed both, you see, now, because we, we couldn't, we, we, we were flush for about a week. So, if I had had time, I'd have gone back to the pawn shop where I sold my ring and tried to get it back. But now we're unflush again, so I'm not sure that's going to happen. you got to get your massage hands out. Yeah. I've got to, yeah, I know. I know, but now I've then I got, but then now I, now I fancy myself as a bit of a, a bit of a female David Dickinson. Yeah, we'll um, or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, maybe, but I hope, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that some, something in that, Yard of junk. Um, <laughs> is something worth worth selling. I'm not sure. And making some sure. money for it. No, I don't think there is. I don't <laughs> think there is. It looks like junk to me. <laughs> yeah. But what is it? One man's junk is another man's junk. Yeah, I don't know what that's like. I think it's nonsense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what the I've lost I've not. I've not been asked again. Aww. Oh, well, I mean, this year it's a bit taken up with, you know, Jenny and Johnny and maybe Eva and Aidan as well, isn't it? <laughs> we've had, exactly, we've, yes, we've, um, we've got in our fair share of weddings this year, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't be too And it's not as much fun as it looks, you know, a soap wedding. You see, I have had one and I had it, and the, the one I had, um, to John State was in a prison, Ooh. which was actually mm. ideal as soap <laughs> weddings go. <laughs> really? Because it's just, it was just there with no guests. It was over and done with in the day. The mm. thing about being a soap bride is it's gorgeous for day one in in the <laughs> in the you know, in the dress. But then day six, seven, eight oh, when they're yeah. still, you know, like sucking you into the corset dress mm. and you've eaten location catering all week. So you <laughs> your dress literally doesn't fit and you're having to put it on. Um this is and, and, and then it's all dirty around the bottom because because, mm-hmm. you know, inevitably there's been some kind of run through some kind of mud or gravel, <laughs> you know, yeah. something like that has happened. <laughs> so it's covered in mud at the bottom, ripped, oh, and doesn't properly fit you by the end of the week. So actually, it, it, you know, they're not as fun as they look through soap weddings. <laughs> Now, this year, it was when we finally, well, me and Gemma finally got around to watching the Out of Africa DVD special. That must have been pretty fun. To oh, see. yeah. Well, what was that like, going out there to uh, to do that? Oh, God, yeah. We had, we, we, we how, when was that? 
Oh, oh don't exactly. put me on the spot. <laughs> no, yes, I know I'm not putting you on the spot. Nine, ten years, I don't oh. know. <laughs> Oh, I so wish we could do because they they did have a they did have a spate of doing those um mm. those those things. Um, I mean, my I just think oh, I wish we could do. I think that was was that the very last one that was done, or was there another one that was? Um, uh, uh, when did Roy and Haley do those? I know I'm putting you on the spot now. I'll have to put I you on Roy the spot. I thought Roy and were before. I thought they did. The, I think um, it might have been. I think it might be. We mm-hmm. killed it, basically. That's what we're saying. We did it. And that's the very last one they've ever done. Yeah. They've never done it again. <laughs> um, oh but we were just we were just there for, I mean, a couple of weeks. We got the whole thing done in a couple of weeks. It was like a really, a really, um, a have... real quick job. Yeah, intense. Very, yeah, very intense, very hot. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I wish we could. But we always say that we wish we could do... Um, we don't even we don't even need anything glamorous, you know, as factory girls. We'd love. Um, I don't know if I'm quite saying this out loud because again, it's a bit like a soap wedding. It's more, it's not as much fun as it seems. Mm. Um, <laughs> but um, our idea was we'd love the factory girls to go on like one of those outward bound weekends where you learn, you know. Maybe like an army assault course, oh. where you, where you, you know, where you, where you do some bonding. Yeah, that'd be fun. You know, actually. work, workforce bonding. Yeah, like yeah, team building exercise <laughs> in the middle of the wood. Team building exercise, yeah. exactly in the middle of a wood, like that kind of thing. Oh, Why am yeah. I putting myself forward for this? Why don't I suggest Barbados <laughs> yeah. or something? See, that sounds like something that Why Dirk could I... get involved in as well. You could finally find out the truth about Dirk around the campfire or something. Dirk would so be like, yeah, and he'd get his <laughs> guitar out and do a bit of singing and tell oh. his life story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we definitely have to get Dirk, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, moving away from Coronation Street, um, we've had the pleasure of dining at your tea rooms, Annie's, when we went to yeah. Manchester a couple of times. Um, you've been open for, is it almost five years now? Yeah, it'll be five years in December. I mean, it's just gone ridiculously quickly. Um, mm. But yeah, the same as, the, so as so as everything, like, just... Just, yeah, it does. <laughs> just does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so five years in December, yeah, yeah. So we were recently, I've got to blow our trumpet, we were recently uh, voted. We've had a couple of awards over the time. We won Manchester Confidential, which is um, a big, big um, online magazine. Right. Um, foodie magazine, we won there. What did we win? Best afternoon tea in Manchester, as yeah. voted by the um, as voted by people who come. So we were thrilled at that. Yeah, well done. Yeah, congratulations. How, thank, how you, thank you. Thank you if you voted. Thank you if you voted, and I don't and I won't mind if you voted for somebody else. No, we did. We did actually. <laughs> vote for you. Good, good, good. <laughs> thank you. So, to what extent are you involved with running the place? Was it? I mean, like, was it like juggling it with your filming schedule at Corrie? Yeah, I mean, yeah, there is a bit of that. Um, there is. Um, I, I'm there. I'm there as much as as much as I can be, and I, and I love being there. I mean, my favourite, my favourite part of having the restaurant is meeting the people who come and meeting the customers, and especially when they become regulars, which we've got a lot of regular customers who come, and then they might celebrate their birthday. Mm. And then, you know, we have baby showers. Baby showers is a big thing because our afternoon tea is a big thing. Mm. Um, um, You know, it's very popular now, afternoon tea. And ours is a very traditional afternoon tea. Um, So it's a kind of, you know, the um, baby shower and also hen parties. Right. Real where the girls can get together. Um, So I love going on there to see them. And and I've met women who've been on their hen do's there. (laughs) Then they they get married and they come and bring me the, show me the pictures. Then they have their baby, baby shower there. And I'm like, oh, this is lovely. Yeah, it's lovely. So, um, my favourite, that is my favourite part, meeting, you know, meeting, meeting all the regulars. Yeah, we, when we um, came, you, we met you the first time we... Yeah. yeah. That was really nice. <laughs> we were expecting oh, to... No, talk. so you know I'm not lying when I say that, I'm, no, that I am there. Really <laughs> yeah. you, you know I was there. I wasn't like a mirage, was I? I was <laughs> actually there. We, we but it's hard, right. you know. <laughs> but, you know, it's hard because... Um, uh, 
I work on Corey, and I've got my little boy. So between it all, we juggle it. We juggle it, and uh, but I've got a, I've got a brilliant team. I mean, people come to me and say, "Oh wow, how do you do it? You're amazing. You run this restaurant. You've got this. Um, you, you know, you're a superstar. You've got a child, and you've got um, um, you run this restaurant." I, I, I. I'd be lying if I said that's the truth. What actually is the truth is there's a really big team around us. Oh, I could, we couldn't do it. And Chris is obviously there nearly all of the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's, and he, but he's got a great team. So we've we've got a great team who who work really hard. Yes. Um. You you hit the news this week. Um. Because Annie's became the first restaurant to display the breastfeeding friendly Manchester mark. Yeah. Can you tell us more about that. Yeah, so um, the Manchester City Council approached us and said, "Would you know we're we're launching this mark?" And it's exactly what it what it what it says. So it's the breastfeeding friendly mark. Lots of, I mean, lots of European cities have them. Right. Um, the, the, there aren't really many European cities that don't have them, um, and, and they're displayed in the cafes and restaurants. So it's basically so that a mum can walk past and see that mark and say, right, I know that this is a place where, you know, the staff are geared up to yeah. um, to, to know that uh, I'm going to come in, I'm going to feed, feed my baby. So it's somewhere where you can find, like, a comfy, you know, it's going to be a welcoming yeah. place. Because, you know, unfortunately, some places kind of, you know, aren't, or they just don't seem welcoming. There might be places that, are welcoming, yeah. but they just don't seem it. Like they look a bit stuffy. So if they yeah. had a sticker, you think, oh, they are. They definitely are. I know they're going to be okay. So, I, so I think it's um, well, I, well. On one hand, I think it's a shame that we have to have them. I think it's a yeah. shame that that it can't just be. Yeah, taken. Um, yeah, it's a shame in one way, uh, but I think. Overall, it's welcome, and I think, I think, and hopefully, so yeah, we, we became the first uh, to display it, but already there, there are others, and hopefully, I mean, the council hope that over over the year, every restaurant in Manchester and cafe in Manchester displays it. Yeah. Um, I hope, I hope that is the case. Great. So, it just gives you peace of mind, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's, a, it's um, we used to go around, so Chris or my dad would go in for me. Yeah. Um, I knew that I could go into Annie's. Um, uh, um, and feed no problem but I'd find um, I'd, we'd, find, we'd see a cafe you know and think can I go in there so I'd send them in for a little recce and they'd come out and say mm, no move Aww. on or yeah 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 the dead nice the dead nice woman behind the desk it's all fine you know behind the counter you'll be fine in here so um, so yeah you know so and when you're a new new mum and it's like the first time you've you maybe done it and you've entered out yeah. it's really you've got you want to feel you want to feel you want to feel comfy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. So are there any other ways that becoming a mum has changed your perspective on life and your career in general? Yeah, I suppose. What I feel like is I wish I had parallel universes where I could be at home all the time with Albert and I could be at work because I do love both, but mm. I don't, I, you know, and I, but I don't, I don't, I don't want to be without him. Mm. Yeah, but, I, but, I, but I love to go to work and I think that overall I hope that he sees his mum and his dad going out to work and you know that we'll come back <laughs> and <laughs> it's a lovely it's a lovely thing but yeah essentially what I'm saying is you just feel guilty you do <laughs> you think oh I shouldn't be working I should be home oh no I just what but you know yeah. what if I don't why have I gone back to work why have I done this why have I done that and then yeah you do all, all the time, okay. <laughs> um, but it's, it's, it, 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 really, you just you just hope that you do the right thing for your family, whatever that is. Mm. And what we do works for us ish <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> that yeah, so, that's yeah. To... And we've got a happy, lovely little boy, you know. Mm. So that's all, and a brilliant, you know, support around us. And that's that's all. But yeah, the answer is. Yeah, you just you just just feel guilty all the time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard to juggle, isn't it? Especially if you really, really hard. Job, you can't. You? you can't juggle. You just you can't really juggle it. No. To be honest, it, it's in, it's impossible. Yeah. Something every every day, um, something has to give either way. Mm. Um, it just does. Yeah. You can't. You can't. You can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's if anyone's ever worked out a way to 
juggle work and hope life perfectly, then I'd love to hear it. <laughs> I think you're right. You need to have parallel universes or dimensions. You do. It's the parallel. That is. It's the parallel. It's the parallel universe. It's the exiles territory we need to go into. Otherwise, otherwise. It, 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 we're all just winging it and hoping for the best. Yeah. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it's not so well. Well, listen, it's been really, really lovely speaking to you tonight, uh, Jenny. Thank you so much for uh, oh, for, for so nice. The we, we timed it. We timed it just after coming from shit and just before Big Brother, so that's our mm. deal. Oh uh, yeah, yeah it, right? after that, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, and, and uh, very best of luck for everything and with, with Annie's and the show. Thanks. Thank you, and happy this anniversary oh, thank you, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, and same to you for annie's for december yeah oh yeah oh so what so oh so you're older you're older than us yeah I just, you don't look it you definitely <laughs> don't look it oh that's nice of you <laughs> but much younger than coronation street both of us yeah yes true, yeah. just little babies <laughs> <laughs> uh, take care guys bye-bye